As most of you know, I'm a big Linux fan. And while Linux can be made to run on a lot of the low-cost Windows laptops coming out of China these days, it can be quite a hassle patching all the issues. It's generally not an out-of-the-box experience. GenOS is a new Linux distro that hopes to make that a bit easier. And they even have their own tablet, the GenPad A1. Now, there aren't a lot of Linux distros that run well on tablets, but GenOS says it can serve as both a desktop and tablet operating system. That's a pretty tall order. Let's see how they put that off by unboxing this very unusual Linux tablet and taking a look. Wow, it has a very really nice leather uh, case. I think this is leather material. This is the stylus. At the bottom of the box, we have the adapter. USB cable. Okay, on the back of the uh, box, it shows the keyboard rest. Hold the bottom right corner. Hold the bottom right corner of the tablet and use gentle force to take it off. So I can just snap this on here. And then if I open this, it can stand like this. The Jingpad A1 is an ARM-based tablet that has an 11-inch 2K AM OLED display with a 4x3 expert ratio. It comes with a checkpad keyboard and a stylus. I personally prefer a 4x3 expert ratio, but if you mostly use your tablet for watching movies, you might want something wider. Although, why you need a Linux tablet to watch movies on, I'm not quite sure. The Jingpad a1 is just 6.7 millimeters thick and weighs under 500 grams. It has an 8,000 mAh battery, which they say will last up to 10 hours. I'm not going to read off the processor specs. Basically, it has a Unisoc Tiger T7 510, so it's a mobile phone SOC, not really a powerhouse. As always, I don't get hung up on specs because they often don't reflect usability and I'm not editing 4K video on devices like this. Okay, let's take a look at their settings. I'm connected to, I already connected to the Wi-Fi and uh, let's go to display and brightness. Okay, now it's the brightest. You can adjust the brightness by swiping it to the left then to the right to max it out. 
wallpaper and change the wallpaper. I, I, I guess the default wallpaper is okay for now. System and update. Let's take a look at about. Model name is Jim. Pad A1 software version is Jing OS 1.1.1. RAM 8GB internal storage, 256GB the kernel version. <laughs> it's a long number, I'm not going to read that off. But uh, if you are not up to date, you can check your software update over here. So come version 1.1.1 found updatable package before updating. Please make sure device is charged. During the updating process, please connect to the internet throughout. I'm gonna update later. There uh, are updatable packages, good to know. And uh, I'm, my tablet is in English right now. You can also switch it to Chinese. So far, the, so far it's pretty responsive. And the track pack, track checking speed. This is the default setting. Okay, let's quick it, quick out, and let's take a look at their pre instruction uh, apps. They have their me media player files, calculator, photos, voice memo, and Chromium. Let's go into Chromium. Okay, let's go into their store and take a look. So jingos.com is their, their website. And here you can see there are uh, some brief introduction of the product. But very responsive. The UI seems the UI seems okay. Okay, let's go into GIMP and try their stylus. Uh, you can of course install GIMP in the command uh, by using the command line. But you can also go into their store. So in there, because uh, it comes with the stylus, so there are lots of programs for designers or painter to use. Blender, GIMP, and other programs. So in their store, there are different catalogs for you to choose. You don't need to type in command line. You can come here to get it. If you want to download a video player, you can get the VLC here. So let's try to use their stylus to do something. Let's go into GIMP. I select the brush. So I'm just applying pressure gently, and now I'm going to push a little bit harder. It doesn't really, the line's faintness is the same. So the pressure sensitivity, the pressure sensitivity is not working, I guess. Let me ask them. So I just talked to them, they said, um, the pressure sensitivity is not working yet. It's, they're still working on it. Probably soon they're going to uh, release a new software that is compatible with the hardware. But right now, apparently, it does nothing. All right, let's quick out and do something else. I would just like to thank my sponsor, JLC. As most of you know, I showed off their PCB manufacturing services in the past. They pretty much keep the lights on around here. So as always, when you support them, you support me. These days, I work with JLC on their commercial 3D printing services. If you need 3D printing with much higher quality or higher quantities than home 3D printing can provide, try JLC. If you'd like to buy a small sample for evaluation, there is this really cute little figurine of me in their store that costs just a few dollars with shipping to most places. It's very, very strong. You can get two and try and break one if you want to test it. I have a video coming up 
where I will compare the strength of home FDM prints with the output of their big commercial 3D printers. That should be interesting. Okay, let's go into Inkscape and uh, try to make um, a pair of earrings. Let's try something else. Let's at least check out Neo Fish, okay? Neo Fetch. Okay, now as you can see, we have 178 tests. Local load average is 10.69. Okay. Um, you can see what's running right now. Background. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, it is. Uh, KD Plasma, Jingo S, Arc 64, Kernel is wanting this, uptime 20 minutes. Okay, enough of that. Voice memos, let's try that. Let's record something by using, hello, this is Naomi recording. Okay, let's play that. Turn it all the way. This is Naomi recording. Is this the loudest? By using. Hello, this is Naomi recording. Hmm. Let's take a look at that camera. Okay, this is the Jingpex front camera I'm recording in my studio. Okay, let's check out how the video quality is and how the audio. Okay, this is the Jingpex front camera I'm recording in my studio. Okay, let's check out how the video quality is and how the audio. All right, Momo, let's take a look. It is a nice day. Come on, let's go, Mama. Let's go. Hello. What do I think of the Jingpad A1? Well, I spent about a day using it. It does exactly what it says it does. It's a tablet that one slimness. It has a very nice user experience, at least as far as the home screen goes. But past that, we run into problems. Meaningless use case for tablets and pressure sensitive stylus would be GIMP. But the pressure sensitive stylus doesn't work in GIMP or in any other application yet. I have some big plans for stuff I wanted to try and demo for you with the Jingpad, editing some simple video, making graphics in Inkscape, and laser engraving them using a light burn, showing off a hole in its only toolchain. After an hour or so of fiddling around with each different thing, trying to make it work, I have to give up and move on. It's not worth that kind of time when I can do it in minutes on different hardware also running in it. An old ThinkPad X220 is an incredibly user-friendly machine because Linux is designed for that kind of hardware. The problem is most Linux apps 
aren't designed for tablets and aren't very useful on tablets. So this is just not a very useful form factor, at least not yet. Outside of the desktop, the screen resolution in each app is so high, the menus are microscopic. This can be fine-tuned a little in each app, but it's still pretty rough going and even with my small fingers. Far from user-friendly, the scaling of most software I installed from the library was pretty terrible with nothing built into the OS to unify better scaling across all the apps. Yes, that can be done at the command line level, but that sort of defeats the purpose of all this. You can still do tablet basis, surf, send emails, take and watch video, but using apps outside the range is really tough going. This isn't the fault of Jingle X exactly, but it is a problem in this space. Companies make hardware that will basically boot to some flavor of Linux, list of capabilities of that hardware and wait for someone else, perhaps you, the user, to make software that actually makes those features work. When most companies sell hardware with a stylus that support 4096 pressure levels, you reasonably expect that it comes with an app that supports that. In Linux land, it's reasonable and expected for that to mean 4096 pressure levels after you co-support for it yourself or wait for someone else to. And I just don't have time for that, not with so many usable tablet solutions out there for the things I need to do. GIMP, Inkscape, and Lightburn, and all the other apps I might want to use on a tablet may one day have tablet-friendly versions of their UI, but they don't now. There are Ultra Mini PCs, you've seen me demo that, will run Linux just fine if it's port portability you need. I use one to run one of my CNC machines and it works great. Tablet com computers need applications with user interfaces designed for tablets. No, you can't fudge it with a desktop app. At the moment, very few Linux apps offer that tablet experience and are going to be useful on the Jing pad. They say that full support for Android apps will be coming in March 2022. To be honest, I don't see a whole ecosystem of tablet-friendly Linux apps emerging by then to go with it. And it does not sound like improving screen scaling is a big priority. I could see this making sense if it was primarily an Android tablet with the ability to run Linux apps, not the other way around. But as it stands, Unless you are a Linux developer deploying some kind of custom enterprise solution that needs to run on Linux, or just a really hardcore Linux kid who enjoys solving problems with unusual hardware, I just don't see this being the right device for most people. That said, it's an honest product. It does what it says, and the build quality is very high. If all you need is a tablet that runs Linux and can take it from there, it may very well be perfect for you. That's it for today. Please remember to repost my video and put in a good word for me. I know how I look can be pretty off-putting in a tech channel, so I appreciate all of you who have give me, given me a chance to prove myself and stuck around. Until next time, if I can do it, anyone can do it.